the man with the reins now in uh, almost a year ago, I believe the AD at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, Chris McIntosh. What's up, Chris? Thanks for being here on Inside Wisconsin. Yeah, thanks for having me, Trevor. Good to see you, John. Um, I want to know when Barry Alvarez was in your living room and he was recruiting you and he said, we're going we're gonna to make you a left tackle, and then when you get to be 40, we're going to make you the AD, or if that <laughs> came later. Uh, you know, it, you know, there's – there's not supposed to be any kind of uh, inducements for recruiting, you know, so that wouldn't exactly be a permissible thing for him to have said. But, you know, there's an interesting story, um, one that's not told very often about what he did say to me in my living room that day. Um, you know, this that was in 1994, um, and uh, I asked him why I should commit to Wisconsin at that time, and um, – his answer was, well, you know, this is like July before my senior year. His answer to me was, well, if you get hurt, we'll uh, honor your scholarship, which at the time wasn't exactly a commonly practiced thing. And um, you know, it made sense. I was going to commit anyways. I, I just felt like I needed to, to uh, you know, ask a question or two. And, and um, you know, it turns out uh, three games into my senior year, I tore my ACL. I ended up having to reconstruct it. I had – staph infection I had three more surgeries i lost 45 pounds and i almost lost my leg and um he came to see me at the hospital here in in uh on U at university hospital i spent 21 days there and i can't imagine what he saw through his eyes you know this kid 45 pounds lighter and just a mess and uh, i'm sure he thought what a waste of a scholarship <laughs> one will be and, I give him credit. You know, he was a uh, man of his word. He was loyal, did exactly what he said he was going to do. He honored the scholarship. And, um, you know, I tell people, if you want to start a relationship out on the right foot, start it out that way. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I came in that following June and, and felt like I owed it to him to, to prove that it wasn't a waste and that he made the right decision. And, you know, a lot has happened since then, but that's, that's how we got started. And if he had told you that day, whether it's in the hospital or in your room, he said, and Chris, one day I think you can be my replacement here as the athletic director at Wisconsin. You'd have said what? Yeah, I would have, I would have told him he's crazy. <laughs> first of all, you would have had to first accept that he would have been the athletic director at that time, which sure. I'm not sure I would have believed that. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. um, but, you know, it's, um, you know, those conversations actually – you know, never really took place uh, until very, very recently, you know, after I arrived here. Um, and, you know, for me, it was a way to come back to a, a university that had given so much to me and then turned to my family, really changed my life, uh, allowed me to have access to a world-class education and the first in my, in my side of the family to do that. And, and um, it was just something I was passionate about. And, and I came back and, st you know, started to learn the, what college athletics was about uh, under his kind of tutelage or mentorship. And, you know, there's some lessons that came from being a player here in his program that, that just proved to be true for me. And that is just focus on those things that you can control, you know, day to day. And then one day leads to another and they add up and here I am. And it's a cool story, right? Wisconsin kid now running Wisconsin athletics. We talked to Barry, uh, for the very first episode of Inside Wisconsin just over a year ago, Chris. And we we talked about how he got it. And so I'm curious to know, here you are in the driver's seat now. You get it. You grew up here just like we did. So what does it mean to you to be in the seat that you are now? Yeah. I mean, it's a it's an incredible opportunity, um, huge responsibility. Um, you know, I, I am – 100% loyal to this university and, and to what it stands for and in the way that we go about our business and, and the, doing it with a high degree of integrity. And, um, you know, it's one of those failure is not an option though. You know, I've made plenty of mistakes and I'll, and I will continue to, I, I didn't, you know, not to be confused with perfection, but, um, to me, this place, you know, means the world to me. And like I said, it changed, changed my life. I don't, I don't know where, I don't know where I would be without having had access to this university. And so I get up in the morning and I'm passionate about making sure that, you know, the student athletes that come through this program have an opportunity like I did uh, to compete at the highest level, to gain a world-class education. And, 
by the way, to enjoy, you know, the, the social experience that, that this campus is known for and, and can offer our young people. It, it's an awesome op- opportunity and responsibility. Yeah, tell me more about that responsibility, because I, I see we have other, the whole UW system, right? Everybody is, t- is touched there somewhere. And athletically, there's a bunch of stuff. When I grew up, UW Oshkosh was a terrific baseball school, and we see what the Warhawks do. And yet somehow at Whitewater, the Badgers and that program, the response of being the flagship yeah. in that everybody still rallies there, even if they like these other places and have attended there, the Cardinal and White are still important to everybody in that state. They are. You know, there's a lot of pride in what we do. Um, you know, uh, clearly in a sport like football, it is the show. There are no clear in-state rivals. We're not competing with anybody there. And I think the people of Wisconsin take a lot of pride in that. Uh, it's one one point to rally around. And, you know, I certainly felt that as a player here. Um, and I feel it now as the director of athletics and, and being around our program. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a point of pride for Wisconsinites and, and beyond, but certainly those in Wisconsin. Um, you know, and you get to, you know, there's a, there's a good rivalry in basketball down the road at Marquette. And, uh, but, you know, largely, you know, the majority of our programs are, are the only programs at this level in this state. And generally speaking, and um, I think that's something that people take a lot of pride in around here. There's a lot of excitement and, uh, and in turn, it allows them to follow us wherever we go. And, and there's always something to talk about. You talk about responsibility and the uh, the social aspect that the university is known for. I was thinking about this earlier today. Chris, it wasn't that long ago that you were a student there and you played football there and you probably were a part of the social aspect of the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Does that give you a leg up with these student athletes? I mean, maybe you were on Mifflin Street or maybe you well, you didn't stand in the student section, but you know about the student section and it's different now that you're running the joint. So what is that like for you? being a student, I don't know, 20 some years ago, and now you're here. Yeah. I mean, I certainly have some insight into what it's like to be a student on this campus. Um, you know, my wife is an alum um, and we had, we had just a hell of an experience here and, and, you know, met a lot of lifelong friends and, and, and really grew up, you know, really came to this campus and found myself and became comfortable with who I am. Um, and, you know, when you talk about, you know, different events or traditions around campus. Um, you know, I've got my own memories and experiences with those. And I think, you know, to some extent, you know, some, there's some consistency with, with what our student athletes go through today, but um, I can relate. I'm excited for them uh, to experience this campus and to make those friendships like I did. You know, at the same time, there are so many things that are different for our student athletes. You know, I was here in a time, you know, before cell phones and, a long, a long ways before social media and those types of things. And, you know, so their, you know, their experience is different than mine, but there are certainly more than a few things that we have in common. So how do you go about, because my guess is what, uh, I don't have the exact number. You've, you've got to be close to 600 athletes. About 850 athletes. 850. Okay. Wow. So, wow. That's, uh, that's, I'm trying to, I go from Missouri and we're about 600. So I guess that's more, whatever. How is it you go about and sort of uh, doing the best you can to, to, to try and touch all those kids in some way, shape or form so that they come away years from now. And I think in my experience is there was a guy that was kind of a low level assistant athletic director, but he made a point to say hi to everybody. His name was Joe Castiglione. He turned yeah. out all right years down, but how do you do that? So those kids know who you are and that, that, there's a connection there and that you're making that impact. Well, I would say this, you know, we talk a lot um, about what differentiates us from other programs. Uh, you know, we talk to recruits about that. We talk to our fans about it and donors and everybody. And the, the one answer that's consistent, it's our people. And, you know, for me, especially, you know, with all the changes taking place and uncertainty really in college athletics, Um, you know, I've got, I'll answer your question in two ways. First, um, I I think our, our student athletes, and I think anybody that's in my position and other programs would say the same thing. They're just amazing young people and they're, they're they're talented and they're energetic and they're fired up to be here and, and they're fired up to pursue 
what's you know usually a lifelong dream and they're and they're excited to get an education here and earn a degree um and you know i'm here to support them and and you know we've got 400 staff that are are here to do the same but the second way i'd answer your question is kind of a more selfish way and that is amidst everything that's happening and and all of the trials and tribulations and covid and and everything else it's energizing to be around our our student athletes and so for me it brings me energy it's what gets me out of bed in the morning it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like i'm going to work it feels like i'm going to respond to you know some kind of a calling here i'm just attracted to this place and the reason i'm attracted to this place is because the people and our current athletes are a large part of that and i i'm i get fired up to see them compete and 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 experience what it's like to compete on a huge scale at a championship level, win or lose. Um, and then I get fired up to see, you know, we had our, our um, commencement last weekend and we had a, uh, you know, a ceremony for our student athletes that are leaving here with the graduation or graduating. I mean, the majors that they have are just incredible. I had to, I had to ask somebody about a couple of them. Neurobiology <laughs> was one of those. And, um, <laughs> You know, they're going to go on and do just amazing things. And, and it's just it's rewarding to me to be part of that, uh, to make sure that that this kind of an opportunity, it's a I mean, I believe it's a once in a lifetime world class opportunity. And um, I get fired up to see them take advantage of it. And I get really excited to see where it takes them in life. And so when they start to come back and share stories about what this place meant to them and the experience that they had and and what they're doing now that's that's what we're all in this business for i'm not a math major chris but do you already have two national championships under your belt as ad at wisconsin did i do that research right well we've got we've got our women's uh volleyball team won, yeah. won it in yeah in uh december uh we had a national championship or national champion swimmer um we've you know competitiveness we had a conference championship basketball team. Uh, it's, you know, think the competitiveness has not slowed down around here. Um, and that's obviously is a high bar, high expectation uh, to live up to. And, and um, I think, you know, one of the things we take pride in is, you know, our competitive standard. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's not the only thing that's important to us here. And, and, you know, I just talked about, graduation and education and those two things aren't mutually exclusive here and i'm proud of both of them yeah i think there's nothing that screams volleyball like a team from wisconsin winning in december um <laughs> right <laughs> in california the beaches but right here madison december volleyball perfect why wouldn't that be a marriage uh, a perfect union a perfect marriage so uh, without diving too deep in any of these i just kind of maybe get your your quick um maybe not yes or no, but your opinion. Do we need some guardrails on how NIL is going? Do we need some parameters there? I think we do. I think we do as it's, as it relates to recruiting for sure. Um, are we good with the playoff at four? Or would you go eight or 12? Uh, I'm, I'm one that's a supporter of expansion. I think it's, um, it's healthy for the game of football. I think it's healthy. I think it's what our players our student athletes want ours collectively just across college football. Uh, so I, I am in favor. It needs to be done right. And there are a lot of questions that need to be answered around that timing uh, with regard to finals and, and obviously number of games, but in general, I'm a supporter of expansion. What would you do with the NCAA? Do you like how it, is it need to be redone entirely or can we work with what's there and change that? Yeah, I think I'd like to think that um, through this process um, with this transformation committee, that there are aspects of the NC2A that that uh, can certainly get stronger. You know, I think um, you know a uniform academic standard is a good is a good idea and, and eligibility. I think uh, you know uh, postseason competitions for for many of our sports is a great thing. Um, and so th there are all kinds of things that they do and they do well. Um, you know, obviously they've been easy to pick on for a long time. Um, and so it's time, it's time to see some, some, re some reform, some, 
kind of a rebirth, if you will. But I'm optimistic that something uh, positive can come of that. And finally, would you take Power Five? Obviously, are 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 there, and and then there's some other serious football players outside of that. Do we do we need to make football like an extra tier? Do we need to have instead of FBS and FCS, we maybe to go one more for some of those that are really the haves, and and make things. Um, and not necessarily equitable, but but there's not a reason that Wisconsin and Alabama should be working under some of the same rules as as um, UConn here or UTEP. Yeah. Yep, I I think um, well I'll just speak from from my perspective at Wisconsin. Um, you know they're they're 350 some schools in Division One, and uh, obviously there's a wide discrepancy between them of amongst uh, in terms of the number of the excuse me in terms of the resources that are available and the level of support that programs can can extend to their student athletes and um you know I, when i hear about some of the criticism when i hear some of the criticism about college athletics today uh, a lot of that not all of it certainly not all of it but there are there are criticisms of college athletics in terms of the support uh and the the protections um, that schools aren't pr- uh, providing that schools with more resources are schools like like ours in the Big Ten and Power Five are and and uh, you know so I'd like to see potentially as one of the developments that comes out of this transformation process with the NC2A maybe more of a stratification of what Division One uh, could look like where schools with a similar amount of resources or an ability to support their uh, sport programs to the fullest can be compared against each other and can, and can compete with each other. We have covered some ground with the <laughs> Wisconsin athletic director, Chris McIntosh. That was segment one. More with Chris, John, and myself in just a bit. We are Inside Wisconsin. Inside Wisconsin is brought to you by Baycare Clinic, Cobblestone Creek, University of wisconsin Platteville, Roll Tech, Festival Foods, Capital Credit Union, North Star Mohican Casino Resort, American Family Insurance, Miller Lite, and Aaron's Company. Helpful critiques, ideas, great stories, people we should know, the great bar in your town, the fish fry you want to know, the fish boil, anything that you want to reach out to us with, we are happy, we are here. You can be the inputters. We're here to listen. 